Welcome back to the Family History Friday video series with the Butler Area Public Library. My name is Margaret, and in this session, we are going to look at World War II draft cards. So World War II draft cards actually represent a really large portion of the male population in the U.S. from the 1940s, so it can be a great supplemental resource, even if the person in question never actually served in the military. So let's take a look at these records. Why World War II draft cards? Because draft cards were filled out for the Second World War between 1940 and 1947, there are a really large data set that represents a major portion of the male population in the United States between census records. So it's going to help us place someone on their personal timeline chronologically in between decades. It's going to help us confirm personal details like birth date, residence, and birthplace. And it's going to give us hints to employment at that time, their citizenship status, and any relationships in that year. We also get a physical description of the individual. We can find World War II draft cards online via Ancestry.com and Ancestry Library Edition through your local library. And there are actually two collections of World War II draft cards. They are split into two specific collections. One is called Young Men 1940 through 1947, and the other is called Draft Registration Cards 1942. This 1942 collection is sometimes called the Fourth Registration or the Old Man's Draft, and we'll get into that in a moment. So you should be able to find these draft cards through a general search for your ancestor in question on Ancestry.com, but you can also search just these specific collections um, through the card catalog looking at the military collection. So here we can see the titles for both the Young Men Draft and the 1942 draft registrations. So let's look at the 1940 through 1947 collection first. So these draft cards are arranged by state and then alphabetically within each state. And these draft cards are going to document men who were born between 1898 and 1929, so roughly between the ages of 18 and 44. We do have some missing records in this collection. The draft cards for Maine were destroyed before images could be made. So if you have ancestors who lived in Maine in the 1940s, you will not be able to find a draft card for them. Here is the landing search page just for the 1940 through 1947 draft cards. So we can see that we can do a search for a name and add some other identifying information like a birth year or a residence. We can also browse the collection using this browse this collection box over here. So we'll simply choose a state. And then because they're arranged alphabetically, we're just going to find the correct section of surnames that will match the person you're researching. And then within that, you might find them subdivided so you can just click the correct corresponding section of cards. So here's an example of what these cards look like. So this is a draft card for Frank Corbin, who lived in Butler, Pennsylvania. We can see that we have his residence and his mailing address. Sometimes you will find a different mailing address from where they live. We know he's 39 years old and was born the 28th of August, 1902, and he was born in Butler, PA. So he's lived here, looks like his entire life. The next question that we have on line seven is the name and address of a person who will always know your address. He answers Harry McIntyre, who lives at 410 Hazel Avenue. And we've, we look up at the top, Frank lives at 413 Hazel. So Harry is a neighbor and maybe with a little further investigation, we can determine if there's any closer relationship between them beyond just being residential neighbors. On question eight, we see that Frank Corbin works for Jess Murray and that that employment happens on West Penn Street. So we can look into Jess Murray and that address and find out what that business was. We have Frank's signature at the bottom. And then all World War II draft cards are a two-sided document. So we wanna make sure we're not missing the second half of this information. So when we are on Ancestry, we wanna take advantage of using these left and right arrows to browse through the images. So we will just click right and that will take us to the back of this card. 
So here we can see the rest of the information for Frank. We can see that he's six foot tall and 212 pounds. He has dark hair and dark eyes. And he also has some identifying characteristics listed. So he has a scar on his stomach and a birthmark. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And maybe that's going to confirm some information you knew personally about this person. Maybe it's going to tell them a little bit about some event that happened in their life. And then finally, at the bottom, we have some registration information for the draft board. So we can see the date of registration is February 16th, 1942. And there's a stamp of the draft board information. Looking at another example, here is a card for Anthony Cipollone. He lives at 127 Hickory Street in Butler. We have his age, 23, and date of birth, June 12th, 1917. And he was born in Gallo or Campo Basso, Italy. But in box number six, we see that he is a U.S. citizen. So we have somebody who was born overseas in a more specific place, in case that's something we hadn't already researched, but he's become a naturalized citizen. The name of the person who will always know his address is Mr. Pietro Cipollone, who is his father. And we can see that this card looks a teeny bit different than the one that we saw before, depending on the year when the draft was registered. The format looks slightly different, but generally the questions are going to be the same. Um, and the address for his father is also 127 Hickory. So we know that Anthony is living at home with his dad. He works for the Ivywood Coal Company, which is located at uh, 343 South Main Street in Butler. And then flipping that card image to the back, we get that physical description. So he's five foot eight with brown eyes and brown hair. And we don't have anything filled in for other obvious physical characteristics. So he doesn't seem to have any notable scars or tattoos or anything like that. And again, we have the big stamp for the draft board here in Butler, Pennsylvania. Switching to that secondary collection, specifically from 1942, just like the other set, these are grouped by state and then arranged alphabetically. So again, you're only going to find these men listed alphabetically. They're not grouped by township or town within that state. The 1942 cards were filled out by men born between April 28, 1877 and February 16th of 1897. So these are going to be men who were between the ages of 45 and 64 in 1942. And the one stipulation for that is it doesn't include people who were already actively in the service. So if you have someone you're researching who is in that age range, um, but they were already in the military, they won't have had to fill out a draft card. So this is another huge age range that we're seeing. So again, between the two collections, we have a really large picture of the male population in the U.S. in the 1940s. And like the first collection, um, we have some issues. There are more missing records from this 1942 data set that were destroyed before microfilming, so we don't have any surviving images. Those include records from a number of states, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Maine, Mississippi, New Mexico, North and South Carolina, and Tennessee. So the older men who registered in 1942 who lived in those states, those records did not survive. We have a secondary issue in some of the records in that in four states, they are disorganized. And we will look at that separately from our general example. Here's our landing page for those 1942 cards for the older draft registration. Again, we can use the search boxes to look for a specific person, or if that's not working and we want to browse the collection, we will choose state and then find the corresponding surname range. They're arranged alphabetically. And within that, I will find the subdivided section if necessary. So here is an example of a World War II 1942 draft registration card. It looks pretty similar to the first that we were looking at in terms of the questions being asked. And again, we can see these separate images. It's a front and a back of a card. So this card was filled out by Thomas David Callahan, who lived in Cock Hall in Michigan. He was 49. He was born in April of 1893 in Bay City, Michigan. The person who will always know his address is Thomas Callahan, also of Cock Holland. So that's potentially a family member. 
And Thomas Callahan says he works for the Austin Construction Company based in Midland, Michigan. Clicking our arrow to the right to flip that card over. We can see that he was six foot and 200 pounds. He had blue eyes and brown hair and a ruddy complexion. When asked if there were other obvious physical characteristics to help in identifying him, he answered none. So no scars or anything like that. He registered in April of 1942 at the Bay County County Building with that draft registration board. Here's another example for Douglas Taylor, who was living in Roanoke, Virginia. His mailing address is the same as his rural root box there in Roanoke. He's 49. He was born in a town in West Virginia, so he has moved states between when he was born in the 1890s and 1942. The person who's always going to know his address is Leona Taylor, and in parentheses, they've put his wife, so there's a relationship clue for us. And he works for a laundry in Roanoke. Turning the page of that card, we can see that this image is sideways, so you might run into some turned images, but we can fix that easily on Ancestry and save your neck. If you click on the little icon on the side that looks like a wrench, that will open a series of tools on Ancestry, and then you can rotate the image. So now that we're right side up and it's a little easier to read, we can see that he was five foot, eight and a half inches tall, 180 pounds with a darker complexion, blue eyes and brown hair. He also has a mole on his lip and a scar from appendicitis operation. So that's interesting. We know that he became ill with appendicitis, but had surgery and recovered. So those were some normal and predictable 1942 draft cards but we have to view some of the records with caution. So the microfilming issues affect four states, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. So if your ancestor in question lived in one of those four states, you need to proceed with caution when you're looking at the cards because when they were microfilmed, they mismatched the fronts and the backs. So let's see what that looks like. So when you find your record in one of those states, for example, we're going to look at a Pennsylvania card, you might see these stacked pictures and think, oh, perfect, I don't even have to turn the page, here's my front and my back of this draft card. So let's take a little look here. So this is for James Wright, who lived in Catanning in Armstrong County. We've got his identifying information, his birth date, and his age. Harriet Wright is the person who's always going to know his contact info, so maybe that's his wife, and he's self-employed. And so then when we look at the image of the back of the card, we can see some height and some weight info. He has a mole and an enlarged knuckle on a finger. Um, so we might think, oh, I wonder if he was a farmer that was self-employed, maybe that was an injury from that. But we gotta pump the brakes because if we read the rest of the card and look at the draft board info in that box, it says that this draft card was registered in Huntington County. So James was living in Catanning here in Western PA, but this identifying information is for somebody who registered much further east in Huntington PA. So this is where we've got that misaligned issue. This is not the right information for James Mead Wright of Catanning. So when you're looking at these cards in these four states where they're stacked, you're gonna wanna know that the front card that you're looking at does not correspond to the bottom card. To see the personal information for James Wright, you need to flip one image to the right. So we'll click that arrow and we'll see this image. So now we're gonna ignore the top card and just look at the bottom. Rotating that, we can see now that James Wright who lived in Catanning, this identifying information, the draft information is for Armstrong County. So when the places match, we know we're looking at the right info. So James Wright was 5'7", with blue eyes and blonde hair, and he had a scar on his right temple. So just always remember when you're looking at these problematic Pennsylvania cards that you're going to look at the uh, result that matches your, in, your search info for James Wright, but then to read the back of the card, you need to flip to the next image. So I hope seeing these examples has encouraged you to check out all of the draft cards for your male ancestors who were around in the 1940s and wish you all the best on your research.